start? Well, I, I, I just want to make, not to make a long introduction, but to say a few words or, or I see the situation. Well, I, I think that, uh, and everybody says it, so it must be right, that we are in a turning point, in the, again, in a new turning point in the European history. We are in a turning point because uh, the European Union is confronted with one of the most serious crises linked to the financial and economic crisis. And learning by doing, this union has to find how to solve this crisis. And, and, and on the political level, we have a problem that uh, uh, most of the governments, uh, or the governments of the European Council, choose a very, uh, I think, unappropriate method to solve the problem, the intergovernmental method. And, and this method is uh, linked to the fact that uh, uh, we have now two countries who have really decided to lead uh, the European Union uh, in this crisis. Well, you would say, uh, fair enough, some wants to lead. But the problem is, if uh, countries want to lead with the importance of France and Germany in the European Union, and they are trying to push the European Union in the wrong direction, uh, this uh, leading uh, function became uh, quite a big problem. And that's what we have today. We have a, a, a Europe going in an intergovernmental way, and a Europe who is at the moment in a very strange uh, ideological, uh, economical uh, situation where uh, they think to that... Uh, pushed by the German, pushed by the German, uh, that uh, now the only solution is really through uh, a budget austerity to become, to, to, to regain economic space. And I think I, 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 we as the Greens, but not only we, we question radically uh, this position. We question that, uh, and, and if you see the proposition done by Gre uh, for Greece, you know, it shows it can't function. It can't function. You can't kill an economy and say then they will recover, because uh, the 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 medicine is to kill someone. But if somebody is killed, then he can't recover. And I think this is one of the biggest problems that we have now uh, at the moment. Um, I, on the other side. We have a Europe which is going forward, also through error. For example, and there I'm in a fight with the French left, uh, if, you, if you see now what it's put forward it, it, with the stability mechanism, you know, that is voted now in France, and this, is, uh, this stability mechanism is a step forward. And it's not the same that the austerity politic that they propose for the government, because it's the first time that they open the door of the possibility of mutualization of the debt. And mutualization of the debt is a very simple thing, it, to give countries the chance to lend money with a lower, uh, with a lower tax. You know? And this is all the story about. And this, I think, it was a fight also against Germany. And I think that uh, there, we have a push of more Europe, because at the moment where, on the European level, you will have in the next year, and if we continue, I think, in the direction of Eurobonds, etc., the possibility to have a mutual uh, fund for that, it means that you will, Europe will have to have more uh, 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 agreements on the economic governance. And there, and this is, uh, I want then to stop the, the introduction so that we can discuss. There we will have the real problem, no, no the, the, the real problem that we have since the introduction <coughs> of the euro. Is everybody thought, or it was said, that with the introduction of the euro, we will have uh, a, fast, uh, uh, a more political integration. And we didn't. But it's not... It's, it's not uh, automatically, you don't get it. <coughs> but now, at the moment, seeing the problem in the world from climate change to whatever, we need more European decisions, so more political uh, integration and more 
political capability of the European Union. And this is the debate that are now uh, on the table around this crisis. So I, because I'm always optimistic, I think that uh, in this crisis we will come up with more Europe. It will come up with a new uh, practice, not only not new institution, new practice, and uh, I think this is good. But this will, and I finish with this, this will push a new problem. And one of the main <coughs> problems, because we are here uh, in Oxford, will that countries like uh, Great Britain will have more and more th the, the question, or will questioning themselves, what do we want to stay in this club or not? And I think this will be a question in the next year uh, where if you want Great Britain, we'll have two problems that Cameron at the moment don't think about. One will be Scotland. Will Scotland stay in Great Britain? And the second, will Great Britain stay in Europe? So it's a double problem, completely different. But uh, it will be interesting how a part of the British identity will argue why Scotland has to stay in Europe, in Great Britain, and why uh, Great Britain has not to stay in Europe, and Scotland will argue why they want to stay in Europe. So you see, it will be have, you will have a lot of uh, very <coughs> interesting uh, uh, evolution also on this level here in the country. Well, thank you, Daniel. Indeed, we can imagine a future where Scotland will be European, but not Oxford. That's possible, or at least in the EU. But you say more Europe, and right now it doesn't look like it. Uh, it looks much more like a mess, and we want to talk about this mess. But, but always, uh, the mess, or always the construction of Europe looked like the mess. No, that's true. It's, 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 it has never been clean. <laughs> I mean, I mean this is, is it's, it's, it's impossible because it's historically something so new. It, it's, you, you have not a map on a construction like something like Europe. It doesn't exist because the construction of such things was always in a, with the political hegemony of one country. At the moment when this is not the case, it, it can only be chaos in the mass, in the construction, because you have to invent everything. <coughs> destructive construction or construction, constructive Goodness. destruction. What does it look like? What kind of Europe then is in the making, Edouard? Tell us. Um, oh, I, I, would be, the I would be presumptuous to, to answer that <laughs> right now. Um, tipping point uh, by all means, but not only for Europe, and this is exactly where we are left now. Um, the key to the new Europe uh, lies in one word, it's democracy tipping point of a history that starts about three, three centuries ago, a little bit longer if you count uh, the first parliaments, especially in this country, but tipping point, tipping point for what we have known as the systems that we live in, which are liberal democracies. Because this is exactly where we are now. Uh, this is an evidence that the problem behind economic governance that we have today in the EU is far more um, um, uh, a problem of democracy than a problem of finances and liquidity. Of course there is a problem, economic and financial problem, but the real question that is behind that is how can I, German citizen, make sure that you my... You, German citizen? Yeah, yeah, yeah me. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like you, I'm German for, for just five seconds. Uh, how can I... <laughs> And the French are profitable, we know that, but the, the, the Germans are um, a little bit uh, more virtuous, aren't they? So how can I, I uh, European German citizen, make sure that the money that I saved uh, on my low wage uh, imposed by Hartsphere and so on is not spent, um, how should I say, wasted by those profligate uh, club med, Greek, Portuguese and everything. And how can I... Greek citizen make sure that the German Bundestag understands the, the devastation that the austerity poli uh, policies that are enforced in my country um, uh, are making. That is the key, the democracy in the making. You could tell the European Parliament is for here, is, is, the, is there for this. It's not enough. 
what would be what would be I think highly beneficial is is that um, a, a German or a Dutch or a Finnish uh, politician could come to 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 those uh, scenes in a different way than just administration Troika and so on and tell them you know uh, we don't trust you and this is why we have a problem and on the other hand the Greek the Greek um, um, uh, member of parliament or the, the Portuguese and so on they could come to, to those countries and tell them, you know, um, okay, you don't trust us, but, but look what you're doing. That would be the beginning of a truly <coughs> transnational democratic space and that is exactly the key point. Uh, there's a small country in Europe that is exactly encountering this kind of problems. <coughs> it's Belgium. Belgium has two separate communities they, uh, in the north the virtuous Flemish community earning good money and really annoyed at the fact that uh, the profligate socialist Walloons are just spending and wasting that money. And the problem is that the, although it's one country, the Flemish citizens do not vote for the Walloons. So whatever they vote, the more extreme they vote, it doesn't change anything in the south of the country. It's still the socialist or coalitions with the Greens, but it's still the socialists that they hate <coughs> that are in power. So they have, in, although they're in the same country, they don't have any legitimate or democratic power on, on, on the people they're living with. And that's exactly what we're facing right now in, 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 in <coughs> Europe. So this is not only institutional, and I don't think institutions uh, will change. Institutions can change the democracy, but legitimacy is not going through only institutional um, problems. So this is to, just to broaden, broaden the problem. Um, the tipping point is for what we've known so far as democracy. Democracy has been built over the past two, three centuries within very <coughs> defined, definite, limited um, uh, uh, limits, sorry, the limits of the nation state. And this is within the limits of the nation state that we have conquered uh, um, political rights freedoms, but also social rights. Um, all that is the history of our European nation states. We have come to a point where either, either we can go forward and build a really, truly transnational democracy, um, and we can discuss the ways to do that, because this is uh, the conundrum that we have, we have faced now, or we go back to what we know, um, better the devil we know, the nation states with all its flaws and, um, and, and, and qualities and advantages, and then that's it. I mean, we, we may have a single market, but the European Union in itself, in the idea, and I'm not talking about the federal state, I'm talking about the European Union, uh, is just no longer um, a, a reality in the making. So, um, transnational democracy. Uh, that is, um, I would say that Europe today, and the European Union in itself, is the laboratory for the democracy of tomorrow. Uh, something that we can see already the seeds um, of in, in the Occupy movement, for instance, uh, or, or in other kind of grassroots politics that are extremely paradoxical because they are the politics of anti-politics. So this is, this is the beginning of the path, and it can lead to very ugly things um, it can lead also to something brand new that we still have to discover.